Thank you for being here today. It is so meaningful. I'm not going to say too much so I don't get choked up. We're very happy to be playing for you in person and those people online too. Um, this is uh, the beginning of season 22 and we're very thrilled to be here. Is the screen up, Evan? Okay. We're starting with a piece by Joseph Jongen, or Jongen, depending if you're a Flemish or a French-speaking Belgian. Hey. And uh, yeah, dans long. Hope you enjoy it.
So on Monday, we lost one of our own here in Asheville, Elliot Wadapan. How many of you knew Elliot? A lot of people. And there's an article out on our table, um, his obituary, or an article by John Boyle. Um, and uh, so I'm playing this in remembrance of him. He worked with Rhonda Larson, who is a flutist, and they toured together to, in Spain as part, as part of uh, Paul Winter Consort, and also went to China with Free Planet Radio, one of our groups here. And it's a very sad loss for our community.
Well, and now for the um, obligatory harp solo. <clears throat> that was so lovely. I don't know if I want to go second today. Um, I decided to play for you a little chestnut of the harp repertoire called Um Springbrunnen, or La Source, the fountain. Um, harp repertoire is full of fountain pieces, and this is one of my favorite. Um, it's gained recent popularity on YouTube. There's a video of an um, eight-year-old Russian girl playing it, a little on the slow side, but quite impressively. And my harp mothers like to say to me, why doesn't my daughter play the piece like this? Because she doesn't practice like a little Russian girl. So let's see how it goes. Thank you. 
Sorry about that. So performing arts groups are encouraged during the pandemic to do shorter programs. But we feel like we gave you a lot of notes with those two pieces. So hopefully you get, feel like you got value there. <laughs> We're continuing with a piece by the American composer Alan Hovhaness, who had Armenian uh, ancestry. And he's born in Boston, but spent a lot of his career in the Seattle area. And he wrote prolifically. As you can see, this is like 406, his opus 406, I believe. And he was wanted the arts to move towards cosmic consciousness and away from sciences. Although we're glad you have your mask on. Um, he wants to. He said he wanted to belong to all centuries, to all time, and. He did not believe that there was such a thing as time in the cosmos. There are only cycles which repeat. And he, I quote him, the only thing an artist can do is rise above in time and be of the future. So what you're gonna hear, this is very Eastern oriented music. It's ambiance, it's setting a mood. Um, they're not very narrative. A lot of pentatonic five tone scales and just very ethereal and beautiful, and la la la. It suits Asheville very well, we think. So. Uh, very cr crunchy. Crunchy, he thinks Asheville's crunchy. Do you think your town is crunchy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. You gotta choose another word, John.
you tell I enjoy playing with this person? We have only started collaborating since August, truly, right? We had our first concert in early August. Are the Dinchies here? Hi. Um, we played a private concert in August, and that was our first outing. This is our third outing. We were in Greenville on Thursday night. Um, if you don't know, the Asheville Symphony is doing a free concert in Pack Square Park um, at 7 o'clock tonight. Yeah, up the hill. It's going to be outside. Um, there'll be arts organizations, including Panaronia, with some tents and tables up, greeting people. Um, I love that spirit of community. It's been a hard haul <laughs> getting through this. Sorry. Anyway, it's a privilege to play for you. The next piece is by someone whose music you have likely heard. Do you know Nino Rota? Anybody know Nino Rota? Yay! Yay, Nino! He wrote a lot of film scores for Fellini, and he also wrote the um, theme to The Godfather. So you've heard his music. This is a, a tweaky... Uh, a quirky piece, very quirky. I'm going to let John tell you a little bit about it. Written in 1939, a year of craziness for our world as um, testament, testament to the fact that even in terrible times, beautiful music is composed and, and played. Uh, John can tell you a little bit about for whom it was written. Right. Um, Nino Rota dedicated this piece to a famous um, Milanese um, harpist, Clelia Gatti Aldrovandi. And she was a teacher in Italy and had a huge harp studio, was a very important personality. And her husband was an impresario and conductor. And they must have hosted a number of people in 1939 because um, Paul Hindemith wrote his sonata for harp in that year and um, also dedicated it to Clelia Gatti Aldrovandi. So this is one of four pieces that um, Nina Rota wrote for harp. And one of my now favorites, I think. Yeah. Okay, we realized on, on, on Thursday night that what, we've, I, what I've really missed are all the happy noises that the audience makes when we get to the end of something and hear people go, ah, or hmm. That interaction is so important to us. Thank you very much for being here. We will put our masks on after we finish and come say hello to you all. Please stay safe. <laughs> <laughs>